Normally in Shabbat, then I take the kids, give him my time to get ready. I was getting ready to leave, and out of sudden he came back, and I thought, it's Simcha Torah, how, how, why you came back so early? And then he said, there is a situation, the Torah doesn't show to go back home, there is a, there is a problem, there is a, something happening. We, we didn't know exactly what's happening, but we realized there is a situation in the country, and then my neighbor came, knocking the door, and she said, uh, don't leave the house, uh, there is a war, there is a lot of people died, there is a big, big mess, you should stay at home, don't leave the house. Um, they told us to tell all the religious people they don't have news. And I don't know, is that, in, in this point, like, we didn't think, like, to open the news or the phones, and Dania thought, like, uh, you think they'll call me? And I said, I don't know, if they'll call you, we're here, and he said, you think I should check my phone? And I said, no, don't. Let's not do Chilul Shabbat now. We didn't know how serious it is. Mm -hmm. and, and then when Shabbat ends, like, he opened the phone, he saw he had calls and he had messages, and they called him, and we opened the news, and I, I was shocked. I was in shock, and I was, like, I didn't know, like, how to deal with this. And he was getting ready quickly, and I helped him, like, to get his stuff. And it was, like, confusing. I didn't know, like, I, I was stressed. I was scared. I, I remember, like, uh, they came really quick to take him straight after Shabbat. And I told him, like, uh, just before you go, can you help me to put mattress in my mind and close the, mm. the iron window? And, um, yeah, I remember I cried a bit. I didn't want him to go. But I didn't want to stress the kids. And, and I'm not sure they knew what's happening. And, and he left. When they call him, they go to the north, mm -hmm. to, the, to, hit, to the base there. And, um, and he was there for, for a week, I think. Um, and then they took him to the south. And we talk on the phone every day. He told me, don't worry, we just back up here. Don't worry, we just back up. And when they talk about going in, um, I thought I was stressed and I, and I started to cry. And, I, and he said, don't worry, don't worry, we just back up. We're not, we're, not, we're not the first force to go in, mm -hmm. don't worry. Um, to actually believe it. And, and, and every time, like, after things happen, I realize he didn't want to stress me, obviously. Um, and only when he came out, he said, like, yeah, we went in. But just a bit, you know, <laughs> not... <laughs> He's still trying to play it down. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah and then, like, there was, um, there was weeks of... Um, disconnection I was in a horrible state <laughs> it was like I tried to be strong for the kids and not show them that I'm worried I'm not watching news next to them um, but obviously inside I was yeah. I had my own war inside it was difficult yeah. my oldest daughter she's in Kita Aleph mm -hmm. and the youngest she's one and a half so that was um, the Kita Aleph so she's seven she's seven yeah mm -hmm. Um, but I think um, my second daughter, which is she's six, she took it the most difficult way. Mm -hmm. She she was worried about him a lot. She cried. Um, she wanted to talk with him all the time. Um, had to also relax her and tell her that everything gonna be okay, and that he will come back soon, and. Um, and every time they released him, like for 24 hours to come home, she didn't want to let him go back. Yeah, it was it was difficult. Uh, you know, every child take it differently. The my boy, he, which is three years old, he tried to, to show that everything's okay. He never complained or something. He obviously asked about daddy when daddy would come back, and but I could see his heart for him, and. Um, and when Daniel came back, when he finished, uh, when he finished and came back, you could see how he become a little man, like he become more responsible. It's changed him, really. I had a lot of support, like help with the children, with uh, Shabbat, uh, everything. They didn't leave me alone. Um, um, yeah. But I, I told them, like, it's, um, it's obviously hard for me, but I completely support him. He, he's doing the right thing. 
I remember at Hanukkah, um, people from his uh, um, from his gdud uh, decided to to surprise families of the of uh, who has family like who is married there and bring like uh, donuts from Rodin and and they called me like every every number that I didn't recognize mm-hmm. I like what please God make please I wish is a new client <laughs> <laughs> I was scared from every uh, unknown number and and then I said hello you're the wife of Daniel Harris and I thought oh my god <laughs> I thought I'm gonna die and I said what I am everything is okay and he said yeah don't worry just want to come and visit you and give you some present and I like <sighs> oh my god <laughs> It was crazy. Scary. Really scary. Like, it's like when you get a, a phone call from the gun or from school. Yeah. The first thing they say is, everything's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, but it was scary. No, they, they didn't do it, silly yeah. guys. <laughs> they didn't do it. They just asked me. Yeah. Wife of Danny Harris. That's the worst. Wow, the worst thing to do oh to yeah. the wife. Why? And when Daniel came back for his uh, 24 hours, how was that for him? I imagine... Hard to switch off. Yeah, it is. And it's not enough time. And he comes and he's stressed and he doesn't know, like, when he will have to go back. Like, there were times they told him, like, okay, don't come back tonight, come back in the morning. They gave him a few more hours. But he always, like, ran his phone and what's happening and when. Like, 24 hours is not enough time. He couldn't really relax and enjoy. And I knew it. I, I, I was... I wasn't pushy. I, I, I gave him what he needed this time, just see the kids. I didn't ask questions. I, I tried to be like, it's just 24 hours. and It wasn't the time for questions or something. It was, um, yeah, it was stressful. And, the, and there were times that I took him back. Um, one of the times I took him all the way to Barry with his friends also. And it was like, you know, some thought that you, you can't share it with anyone. Like, I brought him back here with my own hands. Like, I hope everything will be okay. And, and on the way back, it was dark. And I could hear the bombs. And, I, and I, I'm not used to it. I live in Tanya. There was no even one alarm here. And it was so scary. And... Um, Wow, and every time I thought, I wish it's the last time. I wish he would come back for good. I, I, I can't anymore, please. And I can't talk about it. I can't tell him this. I don't want to ruin it for him because I know, I know that he won't finish. I know that he had enough. I could see it. But he would never, never, never leave his friends behind. He would never leave before the mission is done. And that's why I never said anything. <laughs> I support him until... They finished. Yep. And they're not yet finished. He's, does he I mean, know? they finished, but they got the next... Next call-up. The next call-up, yeah. When is that? Um, in two weeks' time. Two weeks. Yeah, they'll pass off together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously. But um, I thought, I can't, I can't open this now. It's not the time. I, I felt in the middle of the war, like... Okay, break, let's make the most of it. Let's go eat breakfast together. Let's, let's like, not talk about anything. Just make the most of the time mm-hmm. together. Yeah. Um, and, okay, we're talking about when we finish. I didn't want to open anything. I didn't want to make... Yeah, it wasn't the time. Yeah, it wasn't the time. Right. I didn't want to lie. I thought it would be good that they would know that he has his next call. So I told them and she got stressed. And then I said, okay, forget about this. We have time. And now that it's two weeks time, I thought I'll have to tell her, like, I don't want that she wake up one morning and he will not be there. So I told her, you know, in two weeks time, daddy's going, but don't worry, he will be back quick. It's not like last time. And she started crying. It was like, but I told her, don't worry. It's not going to be the same. It's different. He's going to be a different place. He will come back like quick, and um, and then my older sister said, "Yeah, I remember it was one hundred days." And I said, "Right, this time it's not going to be one hundred days, just forty days." Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, 
And then, and then I started to talk about her, about her birthday party. So she, you know, <laughs> changed the, yeah, <laughs> changed the subject. They hear, they know, obviously, and, um, and they ask questions, especially the, my oldest daughter, which is seven. Um, and I answer, I tell her, there is a war, and, um, and we have soldiers that fight. Uh, they do the job. We don't need to be worried. And we have Hashem that he, he will save us. There was Sheikh who come, they will save us. Don't worry. We just need to trust him. Um, and we'll be okay. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get into details or about hostages or about, you know, it's, I think it's too much information for them. Just tell them generally, yeah, people died in this attack. Um, but now we control, we fight back, or so just there to, so we can be safe. We don't need to be worried. Just trust the sham. Everything will be okay. And daddy's a hero. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At the beginning, I couldn't work, especially at the time there were no school, were they, were, they were at home. I couldn't work because uh, I'm working alone. And uh, it was a big shock at the beginning, yeah. And after the kids went back to school and again, slowly, slowly, I, I started to organize things and go back. It was really difficult because... You know, my thought wasn't here, it was half there, half here. And then, don't talk about it a lot, but um, obviously, yeah, he, he saw things. It's it's completely like, come from noisy place with, can't shoot in all the time, bombs, uh, destroy place. Um, obviously, it's affect him. He's more stressed. I can see it. He's more stressed. I'm really proud of all the women that uh, does that, that support their husband, who serve in the most dangerous places. Um, I believe it's the right thing to do, even though it's scary and there is no other way. There is no other way. We, we're fighting for, for living here. It wasn't easy, and I don't think it would be more easy. And... Um, the only thing that hold me is the faith that, that I know that in the end we we'll have Mashiach and everything will be okay. But we have to do our part. We have to protect our country. And I'm so proud of my husband that he does that. And I'm proud of all the soldiers that does that and leave family behind. And all the mothers that send their sons and the wives that send their husband and stay alone with kids and job and I'm proud of them, and I send them hugs, and um, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. When they finished, I thought it could be nice to have a party in, ha in our house, like to celebrate. Uh, so we invite all his, um, all his unit, like it was like about 25 soldiers, and we had a lovely evening with them, and uh, it was amazing to see, like, so, they, used, they were so different. They were religious, they were non-religious, they were old, young, and all kinds of people that you could see that you can't see anything, like, that connect between them. They're so different. And it was amazing. They were so united. Amazing. <laughs>